I'm gonna make a dress in the day. So when you're making a dress in the day, it's best to pick a dress that you've already made before. So I'm gonna make another kirtle, but it's gonna be for history bounding this time. I have one history bounding kirtle that I made and I really like the way it looks. It was originally lined with muslin, but the muslin shrank in the wash because I forgot to pre-wash it. So to prevent that from happening, I've already last night pre-washed my fabric, dried it on tumble dry because I'm using cotton flannel and I don't want it to shrink. I forgot to mention that I also, um, before I pre-washed it, I overlocked the edges of my flannel and stitched them together into a Mobius strip. It is almost 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna start, and I hope to finish this dress by the time I'm tired and ready to go to bed. Here it goes. First things first, I'm gonna press the fabric. So it is about 11 o'clock right now, and I've pressed my fabric, and I've drawn out a cutting diagram to go with my pattern. It would be possible with the fabric I have, which is 42 inches wide and four yards long, to get a full length kirtle out of the fabric I have. However, after thinking about it, and what I had planned originally was to do a T-length kirtle. So I'm gonna go with a shorter kirtle that has a wider hem. So the long version would have a two and a half to three yard hem somewhere in there, which is sort of narrow, but the T-length version that would reach right below my knees uh, would have about a 3.5 to four yard hem, which is a bitter match for the kirtles that I already have. So short version it is, plus pockets might be a thing. All right, I will cut the fabric and check in with you later. Since I forgot to tell you in the intro, the materials I'm using today are a really pretty cotton flannel from Joanne and some natural colored stash linen, also originally purchased from Joanne. Following my cutting diagram, I started by tearing the cotton into appropriately sized rectangles, which saved a lot of time. There are four body panels, two rectangles which I turned into my triangle gores, two rectangles for sleeves, and a leftover rectangle I'll cut my pockets from. I measured the gores by leaving about an inch for the top point of the gores, then folding the rectangles along a slight bias from point to point. I ended up with one isosceles triangle for the back gore and six right triangles from which to make the front gore and two side gores. I laid out my sleeve pattern on the sleeve rectangles, cutting about a half inch seam allowance, and did the same for the body pieces, grading the hip curve into the sides of the rectangles. I then put the trimmed fashion fabric on top of the linen and cut linings that would reach to the bottom of my pattern pieces. It would probably have been smarter to cut the linings first and use them as pattern pieces for the fashion fabric, but hey, I uh, didn't do that. It's 12.30 and I've just now got everything cut out all the way. Cutting always takes the longest. There's a little bit I still need to do with my pieces before I put them together, but first I'm gonna take a lunch break. After my lunch break, I'm going to true up all the linings so that they end at around the same spot on each piece and mark the gore insertion points and seam allowances. All right, lunch break. After truing the lining pieces to the same length and making sure the curve at the bottom wasn't too extreme, I finished the bottom edge of the linings by folding up the seam allowance and sewing it down using a zigzag stitch, then trimming. I'm not working for beauty so much as for speed. I stitched the front linings to the fashion fabric right sides together at the center front seam, then clipped the curves folded the lining to the inside, and pressed. Okie doke, it's about three o'clock. I got back to sewing about one o'clock after my lunch break, and I have finished the front panel of the kirtle. Let me mark the eyelets and then put my phone to charge while I sew all the eyelets up so I can try it on later once I've sewed the rest of the pieces together. I'm very scattered. It's always 
way easier to make eyelets when you're not having to handle a whole dress. I've marked spots for 34 eyelets. So let's see how quickly I can get this done while my phone charges. It's going great so far. Hey, it's significantly later. It's 7.30 now, but I have done 34 eyelets. I left off the very top one on one side just to make sure that I like the height of the neckline. If I don't end up liking it, I can always add more eyelets at the top because I haven't boxed myself in by putting the closely spaced eyelets together. Next, I sandwiched the fashion fabric between the lining fabric and basted the side and back seams down to the gore insertion point. So I haven't put all the gores in yet, but I figured this was a good stage to try it on. I've basted the side seams in case I need to take them in any... I am very happy with it so far, and honestly, like, it's a little bit longer than I anticipated too, so I have a little bit of room to play around with the length. Just gonna wear it for like 30 minutes and then crack on with the construction. Looking forward to it. I did end up taking the side and back seams in about a quarter inch on each seam. During my wear test, I noticed my arm size were digging in at the front, so I moved the front edge of the arm side in as well. I took the rectangle of fabric I had set aside for the pockets, folded it into quarters, and cut out some generous pocket pieces. These pieces were stitched right sides together and I finished the edges by trimming them and using an overlocking stitch on my machine. Okay, pardon the noise in the background. My husband is watching a movie or playing a video game or something. Um, it's about 9.30. I've just finished putting the pockets together. I need to insert them into the side gores, which handily have a seam in each of them and finish the construction and then I have to machine fell all of the seams and hem it. But yeah, it'll be a late night, but I can do it. I had to sew the side gores together and finish the center seam before I inserted them. I also opted to insert the pockets in the seam between the gore and the body. When inserting the gores, I use the machine for everything, even the point. To insert the point with the machine, you have to be really careful to keep the rest of your skirt fabric out of the way so that you don't have to unpick anything. It's 11.30 and I'm starting to get grumpy. I've finished all of the construction seams on the body. I've started doing the felling, but I haven't even touched the sleeves. Guess I failed a little bit, but you know what? Uh, my sanity is more important than this dress, so I'm gonna go to sleep. Okie doke, it's tomorrow and I have roofers at my house. It's about 3 p.m. I would like to wear this dress tomorrow. I have critical role tonight at nine and I probably need to eat dinner before then, so I think I have about five hours. My machine felling is pretty sloppy, but it does the job. And I'm proud to say that even if I've got raw edges inside this dress, I didn't have to unpick anything.
it's about six o'clock. So I've got the body all put together, all the seams finished and everything. Look at the kitty. Hello kitty. Um, the only thing left to do is figure out the sleeves and the hem and the buttons on the sleeves and finish the neck edge. So I think I can do that in two hours. Looks pretty good. Okay, gonna baste it in. After trying on the sleeve, I basted it along the arm size seam line, trimmed the seam allowances down, and then. Oh no! After my phone died, I attached the sleeves and made one button for each cuff. If you're looking for a tutorial for medieval cloth button making, I'll link a video in the description below. You can also find a short form tutorial in the medieval buttons highlight on my Instagram profile at the singer sews. I didn't get to hemming the dress that night, but since I was visiting my mom the next day, I took the unfinished dress with me and had her help me level the hem. Saved me a ton of trouble. I sewed the hem at her house and got to wear the dress later on the weekend. I made my lace from DMC Pearl Cotton, and I got these really awesome wire lacing points from the Fairy Tales chest on Etsy. And I really wish that I had done this a little bit more neatly, but one of my favorite details of the dress is this pink bias tape that I used to finish the neckline. I may not have made the dress in one calendar day, but it definitely took less than 24 hours of work, so I think that still counts. Look how lovely this whoosh is, so lovely. So I'm gonna be honest, uh, the making of this dress happened about three months ago, if not more. Um, but here I am today, I am so happy with this dress. <laughs> So happy with it. I wear it all the time. I'm living my best time traveling elf life. <laughs> Eventually, I hope to have a kirtle for every day of the week. Um, and the next time I make one, it'll be that much easier because of what I learned on this project. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you would. If you want to support me and get me some better uh, recording equipment and help me pay for quality recordings for my Vox Festitus series, go ahead and head over to my Ko-fi, which is in the description as well. Oh, uh, next month, October, I will be taking a break from my upload schedule because I have to move in two weeks and I'm also in a new job that's really, really challenging. So um, no video next month, but look for something in November and December. And I hope you stick around. I hope to see you next time.